What is going on everybody? This week is going to be just me, uh, no car work. Uh, I wanted to expand on a topic from the last video. Uh, so I briefly mentioned correcting the roll center on the car. Uh, so I wanted to kind of go over more of why I'm doing that and what I'm going to get from doing that. Uh, so first off, what is roll center? So roll center is a point that the center of gravity of the vehicle rolls around. Uh, it's, it's defined by the suspension geometry. So you can, so the front suspension has its own roll center and the rear suspension has its own roll center. If you were to create a line between the front and rear roll center, that would be your roll axis. Uh, so that's just uh, axis that the car will roll around as it turns. That roll axis doesn't necessarily have to be flat, it could be angled either towards the front or towards the rear. Um, but for this video I am just going to be talking about the, the front suspension, the front roll center. There are two popular suspension designs. Uh, uh, a double wishbone which has a lower control arm and an upper control arm, or a McPherson strut, which is a, just a lower control arm and a strut that attaches to the spindle and to the body. Uh, so the Mustang is a modified McPherson, so that is the one that I'm going to be talking about. How do you find the roll center from the suspension geometry? So you find the, the pivot point of the the ball joint, and then you find the pivot point of the control arm frame mount, and you would draw a line from those two points and you extend it out. Then you find the angle of your strut and where the strut attaches to the body. Then you draw a line that is perpendicular to your strut and extend that out. So where those two lines meet is your instant roll center. Then from there you find the center point of the contact patch of the tire and you extend the point from there to your instant roll center. Then you repeat the process for the other side and where those two lines from the tire contact patch to the instant roll center, where those two lines cross is your roll center. Roll center is expressed as roll center height, and that height is from ground level. So your roll center can either be below ground or above ground. So I was saying the center of gravity rotates around the roll center. So you can see that you have a distance from the center of gravity to the roll center. And that distance, the further distance it is, the more uh, of a moment arm is on the roll center, and that more leverage that center of gravity has to roll. So you can clearly see that the further away the center of gravity is from the roll center, the more the car is going to roll uh, versus if the roll center is closer, it will roll less. Uh, but you want to have roll. That's kind of how you transfer weight and that the tires gain traction. So a tire uh, has a, a traction versus load uh, curve usually. So the more load you can put on it, the more traction it's going to have. Uh, and it will level off, obviously. But for the most part, the more, tra the more load you put onto a tire, the more traction it will have. Or the ideal roll center is typically between one inch below ground to three inches above ground for a race car. So a roll center that's below ground will increase roll since you got a further distance from the center of gravity. Uh, it also diminishes turn-in response, and but it decreases your ride height, uh, which is kind of, as, as you move it down, your ride height and your center of gravity will move down. Uh, a, a roll center that is above ground will decrease roll because your center of gravity and your roll center are uh, can or can be closer together, you'll improve turn in, but you also increase ride height. So on the Mustang, as I lowered the car, 
the the roll center the roll center moved down so with the lower roll center there was more body roll occurring on the on the front uh, some things that I did to try to keep that from happening so I got the stiffest springs that you can buy off the shelf the H&R Super Race I got the the biggest sway bar that I could find which is, is from Steeda so those things were just a band-aid for the poor suspension geometry that I had going on. So I really wanted to fix that. So I took some measurements and I plugged them into an online uh, suspension tool and found roughly that my roll center is more than one inch below ground, which was causing the more the body roll, it was causing the poor turn in all the symptoms that are typical of a roll center that's below ground. And I could see that because of how the control arms were angled. They were angled up from the body to the spindle. Uh, ideally, you want the control arm to be level at static ride height. So going back to how you calculate roll center, you can see that as you lower the car, your, your spindle side stays where it is because it's defined by the tire height and how it attaches. So your outboard point does not move as you lower the car, but so your frame mount has to move lower. So as you move that point lower, your, your roll center is going further down. You're also lowering your CG, but probably not uh, at the same rate as you're lowering your roll center. So the only way is to get your roll center back up is to either raise the car back up or physically move your frame mount up, which is what the Maximum Motorsports K member does. But the prepared class that I, uh, the car was running in cannot have an aftermarket cross member without having a, w a weight penalty. So that's one reason that I have the stock K member still in there. You can modify it, but it has to be remain the stock cross member. Um, so yeah, you can raise the frame mount up or you can get a longer ball joint on the spindle side, which then lowers that side of the control arm down. So that's what I did. I uh, got the Steed X2 uh, extended ball joints to move your outboard point down to ra then raise my roll center back up. So I put in the extended ball joints to lower the, the outboard side of the control arm. What I also did was put the, the rubber isolators back onto the, the springs, which will then also raise the car up. So those two things, um, will raise my roll center. So I took those new measurements with the extended ball joints and the spring isolators installed and plugged that into the online calculator. As you can see now, the roll center is above ground. The numbers might not be exact. I took some approximations in some of my measurements because uh, just because some of them are really hard to get to without removing some components and uh, things like that, but they are pretty close and Really, it just kind of shows the difference from what I had to what I have now. Um, so it's a, it, it moved it up a lot, but I only increased the ride height of the car uh, maybe an inch, which I'll give you a, the inch can be a lot in the looks of a car, but it's something that you sometimes have to sacrifice for having a better handling car. So like if you went to, often when you go to the racetrack, the cars, you won't see cars that are slammed to the ground. And if you do, they're not the fastest ones out there. Um, they've compromised their suspension a lot of times and the cars were not designed for that kind of modification. Uh, a lot of times the fastest cars will be ones that aren't slammed to the ground. They'll have some suspension travel. Cars that will be low and handle well are ones that are designed to be like that. So typically a, a Corvette, a Porsche, 
the Miatas. They're designed for that kind of ride height and are better handling. So briefly, I'll, I'll touch on a double wishbone. So you find the lower lower points the same as you do for the McPherson, but on the for the upper control arm, you just find the roll the pivot point of the upper ball joint and then the pivot point of the control arm to frame mount. You extend that out, and where those points meet, you have your instant roll center. Also, you then find the your center contact patch, extend that out, repeat it for the other side, and there you have your roll center. Um, so finding the two is pretty similar. A double wishbone is a lot easier to visualize and find the roll center of than the McPherson, but the McPherson is probably more common on just your typical car. Uh, the roll, or a double wishbone is more for a race car or performance is more for a performance type of car, which we know the Mustangs are not performance uh, cars. They're 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 more for the average day or drag racing crowd. So to make a, a Mustang handle, you got to do a lot of modifications. Um, but at the in the end, it's well worth it. It's fun to have something a little bit different than your typical autocross and track day cars. Um, and once you get a Mustang to handle, it's it's a lot of fun and they can actually start being quite competitive with your typical Corvettes and Miatas and Porsches out there. Now that I've raised the roll center, uh, I'll have to figure out a next autocross or a practice day or something like that. I'll have to figure out if maybe the car is now too stiff on the front. Uh, I don't have enough roll. Might have to put a smaller sway bar uh, onto the front. Uh, I have two stock ones. I think it's, uh, I, I had the V6 one that originally came on the car and then I think I have a Cobra sway bar. So between the sway bars that I have, I should be able to find a combination that I like and handles well. Uh, might, we might have to change our driving style a little bit now that the car will handle, should handle better. Um, but that's just something that will have to play around it with and figure out. So that's roll center. It's just something that I wanted to expand a little bit on the from the last video. It's something that I just kind of briefly touched on. So some people might not really know what roll center is. Um, I know a lot of Mustangs, but a lot of cars in general, there's they're lowered too much, and the suspension is just not was not originally designed for that. And then you try to go do any kind of handling events and it's just it doesn't it doesn't work out too well thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one